Bengal fading away, sad but true. As a Marwari whose forefathers started living in Bengal some 350 years ago and created this region as the best industrial state with huge opportunities and having cultural heritage, it pains me to see the desperate lows that Bengal is touching. Almost every Marwari or Bengali who gets an opportunity to leave Bengal does so gleefully. And in nearly 95% of cases, never to return except for short visits to meet family and friends. It used to be the seat of knowledge, a hub of industrial activity, the capital of culture and the prolific producer of sportsmen. In short, it was the most vibrant place where it ever was in the entire country. The saying was, what Bengal thinks today, India thinks tomorrow. Now we can surely say that it is a history. Let's see if history repeats again. Then it all changed, which Prabhati Mukherjee lucidly explains. Bengal has been on a decline ever since 1963, since Bidhan Roy passed away. He reinforced the foundations of the state. Got the Durgapur and Alloy Steel Plant, Chitranjan Locomotives, India's first satellite town in Kalyani. Digha Beach Resort expanded the engineering industry, set up engineering, technology, medical, management and other institutes. Kolkata and Jadavpur used to be the prime universities in India those days. Bengal had the IIM, IIT, ISTAT, I, the Operations Research School, Bengal Engineering College, besides of course Presidency College. SXC, Scottish Church and many other venerable institutes. It was the HQ or the headquarter of Birla, JK, Bangar and Thapur and Tata were in the process of moving there. The Grand Tata Center was built for that purpose. This was the vision of Tata's. Most of the investment was in Jamshedpur. Most foreign companies had their hand their headquarters in India and particularly in Kolkata. This was the reason Kolkata has the best of the clubs in the country. Members of these clubs are proud to be part of old British heritage. It has the highest number of international flights. Bombay used to serve mainly Aden, Muscat, East Africa. And then Ashok Kumar Knight happened in February 1968. Women were dragged out and their naked dead report bodies were found in and around the lake over the next two days. The CPIM leader Jyoti Basu and company called it the rise of the proletariat against the Burgoyes and justified it. Kolkata started empty. Soon after, Aditya Birla was dragged out of his car between GPO and RBI opposite writer's building, thrash clothes, torn, stripped down to his undergarments and made to walk like that to his office at 15 India Exchange Place. With a crowd roaring and laughter and cheering, he went home and took a flight to Bombay, never to return. Took all his money and organization out of Bengal, today they are one of the top industrial houses in the country. So did JK, so did Thapar within a month. So did most entrepreneurs, so did most MNCs. Today, no industrial house plans to start any project in the state. Best example that comes to my mind is Tata for the Nano and Sajjan Chindal for the JSW Bengal Steels. I'm sure there may be more, however, I'm not aware. So did professionals, educationists, intellectuals, artists that this being the dream that the communist wanted and there was no change by the present Srinmul government. Those who had nowhere to go were threatened by goons and movements like Amra Bengali to keep silent. That had become the political culture of Bengal. Thereafter political parties irrespective of the you kept following the same culture and unfortunately will keep doing so because the best manner to remain in power is not to permit empowerment. The people are strangely watching silently for 55 years now and will do so unfortunately for another 55 years. May see the state to turn into an obvious state. 
just keep your fingers crossed those who disagree migrate out to other parts of india other countries too one finds so many teachers scientists researchers artists from bengal and the us uk france germany benelux scandinavia defense etc but none worth the name here in bengal mass exodus once the capital of india truly sinking bengal now it's time to smell the coffee hope kashmir will not be repeated where kashmiri pundits had to flee overnight they had no time to consolidate themselves sad bengal is fading away